On the contrary, comrades, we can also say the demise of any revolution is when those in power leave the well being of the people in the hands of the market and the unelected owners of capital. We must confront equally inside our movement the infamy and the disgraceful conduct inside our ranks, irrespective of who commits them, and never patronize our members, particularly when they do wrong things just because they support us. And we must reject even unprincipled peace that only lasts for the duration of our meetings. Because every time when, for instance, you read, and I was very happy, Comrade Lechisa, last week, uh, this week, to read earlier during the week, a statement of the NEC of the African National Congress. Once a very reassuring statement, clear and firm and decisive. I agree with General Len. We need that. That's what we think the ANC leadership is elected for. Therefore, comrades, we should also enforce compliance of collective decisions and defend these decisions as well as a movement. We must learn from our mistakes. Our revolution, comrade, is based on the superiority of its ideas and comradely persuasion. But once the movement has taken collective decisions, it's our task to implement and respect those decisions and to defend those decisions, not to question them willy-nilly. We must therefore not forget the ABCs of our revolution. This is where we should start and reorientate ourselves. Otherwise, comrade, only anarchy and turmoil will prevail and it will not be possible to run an organization. In this regard, for instance, it is, it is important to give you a quote from Fidel Castro, who when his own revolution was faced with similar challenges in a matter that they characterized in, 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 in Cuba in 1980, 1980, 1989, sorry, as a, the, the matter they call cases one and two. This involved a very senior leader of the movement in Cuba, uh, Major General Arnaldo Ochoa Sanchez, who was one of the few 82 cadres with Fidel who left Mexico to go into Cuba and participated in a revolutionary armed struggle to overthrow the dictatorship of Batista. One of a special few of that glorious revolution. But that member was corrupted in later years and dealt with drugs and dealt personally with the drug lord called Pablo Escobar. And the revolution had to respond to his case. And the prescribed judgment was death sentence. I want to give an excerpt of what Fidel Castro said after the court have said he must be sentenced to death, as an example. And to reverse that decision, he could only get clemency from the state council. In this case, the cabinet. The cabinet agreed with the court. But in their law, there's something that also allows the presidency to give clemency. And Fidel had to address the people on this matter. You could imagine for a senior comrade who was highly decorated and even had the medal of the hero of the Cuban revolution, like our East Talan. This is what Fidel had to say, brief quote. He says, I quote, a true revolution will never permit impunity. The party and leadership and government leadership stated from the start that if serious moral or physical ill arise amongst individuals, absolutely nobody in our homeland, no matter how great his merit or how high his position, may violate the principles and laws of the revolution with impunity. The revolution has been generous on many occasions when it could be so without doing mortal damage to itself. 
Now, the revolution cannot be generous without doing itself serious damage, close quote. So in other words, the conditions that we face today in our movement lead us to accept our constitutionalism, our democracy, and the best we could do is to learn from it. Our revolution has redefined itself by affirming the supremacy of our constitutional democracy, the supremacy of the rule of law, and the equality before the law of all South Africans and all in our country. During this crucial period of difficulties, we have the choice to choose peace, justice, and freedom as a people than the tyranny of the mob and the self-saving infighting of the political class in our country. We must reject violence and the implicit calls for violence and the shutdowns that have been called and narrow nationalism that is emerging, that has been mobilized. So whilst we are rejecting all of this, we should also call for calm and say we should not ourselves be triumphalist. We must call for unity and for the respect of rights of all South Africans.